gen creeps. This is something that we used to see a whole heck of a lot of back in the Witch Doctor Treant meta when that was picked like all the time. Because Chen and Enchantress were also yes. very prevalent. I mean, that that is the the thing about this Witch Doctor is, yeah, you're picking it for that, but I mean, I'm looking at it and you're certainly not picking him for the Death Ward this game because there's so many ways for Team Spirit to cancel it. And with the War Cry, it's going to do very negligible damage. Well, you're looking for an RP into a ward. Like, that's your opening, right? Yeah. Like, you need you to be able to. to make sure that, yeah, Spirit don't get the spells off. Yeah, I mean, if they can get it through with a combo. Yeah, that's right, but they, they're pretty much going to rely on that RP because, yeah, on its own. Yeah, as you said, you can definitely see they're picking it for the cask against the creeps, but other aspects of the hero maybe not going to be working out too strongly against Teen Spirit's uh, tank ability and push because this is already looking like a game that Teen Spirit, I think they're thinking back to the first game they played against Na'Vi today, and they're, they're going to hope for a bit of a repeat here against Mama's Boys with this kind of push draft that they've got so far. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't hate to see something like Jakiro actually from Team Spirit, but I don't. I think Goblack's playing Chen, which means that they need a an off lane. The problem is, can they actually lane Jakiro? I think it's really strong with their heroes though. Warcry, Liquid Fire with Chen, you you actually obliterate towers. But can they actually do any other lanes? I guess with the jungler, like you obviously can't do a two one two. So we're not looking at anything too crazy outside of the box. I still think Jakiro is nice. Jakira, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we saw... Who was it picked up Jakira? It was Seneca, wasn't it, on Na'Vi they played? Yeah. Wow. That is going to be an offlane hero. Which means Sven, carry, Venge, support, mid invoker. Hmm. I mean, Beastmaster's banned out, you don't really want to pick Clockwork. Brood's banned, Darkseer's banned, Bat's banned. Like, these are all common offlane heroes. Even Nature's Prophet is banned. So what other offlane actually offers push? Oh, okay, blast from the past. Okay. We're yeah. gonna go with the Slardar. I mean, this is kind of like the forgotten hero that a lot of teams, you know, they went, everyone was going crazy about the Slardar, and then it totally kind of just fell out of, of favor. But uh, Spirit picking it up here, and well, I mean, you know, you lay down the Amplify, get away with Terra, stun someone with a Sven and Venge, and um, they're gonna die pretty quickly, especially when you got squishy heroes like the Iron and the Witch Doctor. Yeah, for sure. I actually. I was thinking along the lines that he would go for an all-in push rather DK. than go for a little bit of versatility, which is what Slardar offers you. And DK just got some buffs, man. Don't underestimate this hero. He is I mean, yeah. unbelievably tanky. Like, I don't know if you've played against Dragonite since the patch, but at, like, level 9 or 10, literally unkillable. Like, you have 12-plus armor from Dragon's but, Blood. Your, yeah. your regen is insane. You actually have a way of clearing creep waves and a hero that can stand in the front line besides just the gyro. So I actually like this pick quite a bit. It's good against you, Lardar. You know what we kind of cool as well? Hmm. I want to see Bambo getting eggs, and I want to see the dragon form with the splash damage from the ult and the splash damage from the eggs in power. That would be good on top of an RP. Yeah, but that I think the splash in dragon fun. form is only 20%, right? When he has agonims? Uh, oh, yeah, what, with the in power? Yeah, I think it's 20. It's, with... Yeah, it's, it's not the same as a melee cleave, no. Yeah. no it's, that would be imbalanced, But it's still actually. cool. It's still, it's still, you know, that little extra bit of damage. It could be good. It could be good. All right, let's get ourselves into this one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the DK, other than that, you feel it uh, fits into his draft nicely. Because, I mean, I was kind of looking for a right clicker that was going to make use of the empower. That's the thing. And DK, he doesn't really strike. He's not really the hardest of right clickers. Yeah, he's beefy, and he can give them a good punch with his sword. But he's, he's not your anti-mage. He's not your juggernaut, that's for sure. Yeah, but I think they needed a frontliner. I think that's the main reason they opted to go back for DK. Because when you're playing against like these Sven, Slardar, Chen lineups, it's a lot of frontline beef that's very difficult to just straight up de-push, right? So we were talking about Coddle earlier, and the problem with it is you can blast like one or two times, but sometimes you're just going to get dodged, and only killing the creep wave sometimes isn't enough. So I'm not sure. I, I, I do like the pick. That means Bamba will be playing Mag. Good call. And he could just be dead. And one or two more hits, okay, has a fairy fire. I think he's okay. Yeah, his movement speed is quite high, 315 for Meg. Ah, he's good, he's golden. Yeah. He's gone. So the bounty runes should end up going to, yeah, DK and Invoke of the two mids. I actually think it's, you know, if um, Magnus gets an Ags, uh, Gyro's flat cannon. There's not some kind of retarded no, no, interaction no, no, where it no, works no. and all because that yeah. It's I was not Drow's agonims where you just like 
orb yes. and bounce off everything. Some ridiculous crap. Yeah, I think it's just. I was gonna say. I think that your primary attack broken. will splash. Yeah, but the your other attacks attack, will But not. the other attacks won't. I was gonna say because if you get an RP and then all the attacks are splashing onto each other, that's like a bazillion damage. Yeah, and, at uh, least one bazillion. Yeah, that that that's not gonna work. We would we would call that broken. Yes, in, uh, in Dota terms. Very early smoke coming in here, top lane. Yeah, yeah Jen with the level one scouted. rotation. Why not? Here we go. That's the he clap. Should be dead, right? Those cast bounces were actually perfect, dear god. Are oh, they gonna go for the pie cat instead? So Io maybe saves himself, but they'll say, alright, we'll take the first bird by killing the carry. That was actually like the luckiest possible cast bounce that I could have gotten, I think. That was insane. But, yeah, first blood, going the way of Team Spirit. Off to a good start. I think that, uh... <clears throat> so the more I think about it, the better Chen is in, in this patch especially, because if you look at the way the, the creeps are positioned in the jungle, you know how before, when you used to see offlane rotations, where you would just walk behind the tower? Now you can just go get the creep behind the tower when you walk there, and you have another chance of getting a good creep for going for a tower dive on top of that. So it's like, even better. I mean, I'm not like a, a huge Chen player by any means, but I can't imagine this being anything but a buff for the hero. And I know that it's been a really long time since this hero's really been in the meta, but... We could be back to seeing the, the jungle actually being viable. Yeah, this, I mean... The fact that this bottom lane, the way the lane's turned up, and as you said, talking about Chen and his jungle, he's not really going to be able to make rotations down to this bottom lane to help out the Slardar, so... Bamba's going to get a fair bit. Slardar is still winning the lane, though. You know, you're looking at Slardar, he has got 13 for 1 compared to the 6 for 0 of Bambo. So still slightly a better matchup here for the man on the fish. Mid lane, Invoker versus the DK, 14 for 6, 11 for 0. So Hook's keeping up quite nicely in terms of the farm here. Yeah, the, the biggest thing to watch out for is uh, the blink timing of the Slardar. Yeah. Like him winning his lane, I think, is a little bit expected. But as time goes on, Bamba will kind of even things out because he'll start spamming, get his arcanes, you know, make his way towards his own blink. But Slardar is really good for melee because he's 6 armor, very high base damage, and he even bought a Quelling. That's another thing about these matchups is a lot of time in, in 1v1s, if you're playing double melee, having a Quelling just makes you win the lane a little bit harder because it's much more difficult for the enemy hero to deny you, especially when you have a, a stat advantage and a damage advantage so early. Yeah, I mean, Pika on this top lane, even though he did die, 14 CS, he's still finding the farm, Sven, actually behind him here, 7 for 3, had a bit of a tougher time against this tri lane, and well, they're going to jump straight in onto Yapsor here, moving the chain around, but there's the heal from Saxon, Tevin up as well, Stormham onto Pika, Pika in trouble, there's a Sun Strike, he's going to just miss, and Pika, the purple ball's coming out, but it's not quite enough, he's going to be fine, getting bowled up there by Yapsor and south up as well. Nice little bit of control there from the Witch Doctor and the IO to save the Gyrocopter there from what looked like near death. And if that Sunstrike had hit, he would have been dead. So a little bit unlucky there with the Sunstrike placement. Yeah, and they are still keeping the Sven down a bit. So it's it's not like a huge loss, the commitment to this top lane so far. And the Okay, Haster in here on hook. Nice stun. Oh, his stun came off cooldown, but he went in the fog. Is he... This is a very deep dive here from the man. <laughs> uh, oh, he okay, got it! Okay. Oh, he got it! He's gonna die, though. <laughs> yeah. But it does force a rotation from Venge, and uh, he gets a kill on the Invoker. Worth, I guess. He, he got his man. He got it. You know? That's what you call a got him. You go in, you get your kill, even if you die, worth. In all seriousness, though, I think... Yeah, it is worth, because he gets solo experience for that kill, too. Because I don't think Bambo is close enough, so for him getting level 6 faster, it's probably okay. He gives a little bit of gold and the XP to the supports, but it's not a, a gigantic deal. The thing that's um, really concerning right now for Team Spirit is the fact that this Sven is kind of really being left alone here on this top lane now. Like, if Goblack is not there and the Venge isn't there, then he can't really do anything at all. And he's not going to be able to easily secure farm, but... Mama's boys do not have a whole lot of vision in the area. They just have that one ward blocking the creep camp, and that's very easy to dodge. Like, if Goblock knows that that ward is there, he can just walk in. Or they can just smoke and try to go for a mid gank instead, which I think they might try to do right now. Uh, let's see who they can find with this one. Are they going to go for mid, or are they going to go for top? Which way are they going to roll? It's going to be the mid lane. They realize that DK 
I want to try and do something about him. He has just touched up on level 6. If they get a good wrap around, that shouldn't matter at all. And here we have it. Always one of flies going to lead in. In fact, Hook's going to be the one to start to fight onto Iceberg. They've got the magic missile. They're going to start the Rockbot. I think the Rockbot stuns a, a creep there, but they still have the lockdown oh. here with the cold snap. But Hook, he's been kept alive by Yapsaw. The heal here from the IO, he's still alive here. And now the stun again, the Dragon Tail. He's going to maybe be able to find himself a second. The Fairy Fire comes through, but it's not going to be enough. Double kill for Hook. Now he moves in for the third one. Chen left alone here, trying to body block with the creeps, but the tether's there. The tick damage is going to be enough, and it's a triple kill for Hook. Beautiful play. Oh, no. Oh, is he getting more here? Surely not. He might just do it here. The right clicks. It's going to be enough. He will get the kill. It's actually going to be credited towards Witch Doctor. But another kill from being involved in. Sunstrike's just going to be off the mark here. Is he going to hit Yapsaw? He's got to get himself away from these creeps chasing him down. But Yapsaw, the man on the IO, coming in at the right time to save. And he's even going to get out there. The cold snap was in range, but he tethers himself across. And Yapsaw's IO, allowing the DK to get that triple kill. Absolutely massive stuff there from the IO. Well, we're going to have Dragonite problems this game, I guess. At least if we're a Team Spirit fan. If he gets to the Armlet, they don't really have good ways of stopping Toggle. So I guess they the don't actually, they have any damage over time. Well, apart from Invoker's Chaos Meteor, I guess that's pretty yeah, much yeah. the exception. Yeah. That's kind of what I mean is if you go on him and you don't burst him down, their yeah. sustained damage is not enough to really kill a Dragon Knight. And DK also matches up pretty well against Sven just because of his sheer armor. And the fact that he has a very long duration stun, even at one point invested. So 2.5, I think, is like... Is it the longest non-ultimate stun at level 1? I think it actually might be. If you don't they, count things they... like Nightmare. Because Nightmare is not actually a stun. Oh, the Dragon Tail. Yeah, Dragon Yeah, it's gotta be. Uh, I think it's the longest. Maybe Shackles longer, but... That's but maybe it's not channeled, yeah. I should yeah. say non-channeled. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Shackles sure. is 2.75, I think. And Dragon Tail is 2.5, so yeah. It's really good against Sven overall. And the nice thing about uh, the BK this game is he doesn't really feel forced into buying BKB. Because BKB is not really that useful against Chen. Doesn't really do much. And th they have some disables, but their burst damage is lacking. They're looking for kind of like the sustained damage or any kind of minus armor to blow up a hero. But DK doesn't care about either of that. That's <laughs> afterlife is a goner. Holy Bottom moly. Bottom lane, Bamba okay, using okay. the RP straight up, but he Sprint? walks it off. A little bit unfortunate there for Mama's boys. They popped the RP for that one, but he gets himself out with the bottle. Unlucky stuff there for Mama's boys. And yeah, Pie Cat was literally a creep away from level 6. He's just picked it up now. I mean, if he had a cooldown, he would have got that. So just a, a little bit of unfortunate kind of, you know, timings there for the side of Mama's boys. Well, I think if he... Uh... If he positioned himself at max range, he would have got one more auto attack off, I think, which would have killed. But crush range is fairly large. It's actually massive. 350 radius. Damn. It's very big considering the size of the hero. But all yeah. things considered, uh, Mama's boys are still doing pretty well during this early game. I'm curious to see Ramsey's item progression here. Like, does he opt to go in for a blink because their team is more early game oriented? Or does he do what he did earlier, where he goes Dominator S&Y and tries to play for the late game? Because I feel late game against Gyro DK Mag... It's gonna be hard. It, I think he actually needs to go, like, blink BKB. Like, super standard itemization. And also important to note that at 9 minutes, the Chen has had a couple of, like, decent rotations, but he hasn't pressured any towers. And the mid-tier 1 on the side of Team Spirit is already dead. So... I'm feeling as though this Chen is not really... He's having a hard time applying as much pressure as he would like. Let's word it that way. Oh, bottom lane. They're looking for some action here, but Slada, he's going to play it carefully, drops the Amplified back, so there was a rotation coming in from the DK and the IR. I mean, yeah, Yap's so funny, his level 6 is going to be nice as well for Mama's boys. Then they can look to start getting this DK around the map, who is going to have that armlet, as you said, done at a very, very quick timing, thanks to that triple kill he got earlier in the mid lane. I think armlet DK is almost invincible against yeah. their heroes, actually. <laughs> like, it, it sounds crazy, just having an armlet makes you so tanky in this, but uh, because of the buff to Dragon Blood, like the 12 health regeneration on top of what armlet gives you, it, I think it's like 50% of the degen is negated, just from having the passive at level 4. So, it's a very, very solid item in this game. And if he wants to go back for Shadow Blade, and he wants to go into maybe like Silver Edge, or if he wants to go for Blink, both of those items are perfectly viable. And he can play super greedy. He can delay his BKB as long as he wants. Because he realizes again that it's not the magical burst that's killing him. If they want to blow like 
three disables on a Dragon Knight when they're going to have relocate during mid game, I think they're okay with that. Uh, nice smoke up here from Hook and Yap, so, but the ping's come out. It was underneath this ward, so. Spirit, know what's up. I think there's one thing to note though that uh, the Rams is the space he's been given. We saw the start he was struggling in CS, but now he is top of the board. So Sven has certainly caught up, but yeah. But most of the attention has been away from his lane. No, yeah, that's you true. Know. He's had a totally free lane, pretty much. Ramses hasn't had uh, pressure for a little while, so nah. it's, it seems to be that they're more concerned with just pushing towers when Dragon Knight ulti is off cooldown, which is which is how you want to play the hero, right? Like if Elder Dragon form is up, you hit buildings. That's what you do. You get the tier ones down. You try to assume some map control, snowball, show that DK now, is that pretty much smart. immortal. So smart. Did you see that? He was just like, hey, there's a there's a troll summoner person thingamajig. I'm just yeah. going to paralyze and cast you because you're not going to ensnare me. Smart stuff there from the witch he, doctor. He used his abilities. Smart so, stuff. So smart. Do you know Saxa actually means smart in Greek? I actually don't know if you're trolling me, but I'll just say no, because I don't actually know. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you would be that, that person to just fuck yeah. with me and say that, right? Why would I do that, Andy? I don't know. I just feel like you would. You're you're a cheeky little git, we'll say that. But yeah, I, I think the next thing on the menu here for Mama's Boys is just go top with Dragon Form again. Like, they're just smoking as soon as DK ulti is up and looking for kills, and if they don't get kills, they just 5 mana tower. And Ramses has already bailed. He's like, yep, I see this coming, I'm out. They smoked under reward. The one that's just about to fade a top rune, so they should see it coming. Oh no, they're just gonna go rush? Okay, I like this actually. This is good. Yes. Ramses has opted for the Dominator, so this makes killing rush yeah, quite a bit easier. Yeah, smart this game, yeah. I uh, see the smoke up, and they're going to try and make their way over here. I mean, I guess with the amplifying the Forge Spirits, it's going to happen too quick for them to get here in time. So they will get Roche. The question is, it, do Mama's Boys still want to try and fight from the high ground after they get the Aegis? And, well, they're actually Dragon Form. They're going to stun an illusion here. So oh, a little dear. bit of a, a wrong initiation from Mama's Boys, but they're going to they still care. make it go for this. Blink forward from Bambo. Oh, there's two. Oh! Oh, oh, he's got up here, and he'll use it. He'll get two of them, though. The rest of them did manage to get themselves out. They turn around the Chaos Meteor, but they've already found the kill onto the Chen. Double kill for Hook as he moves forward here for more. Yeah. Absorb powering up from the backside here with the tether. Hook, can he close the gap? He's got a dragon tail stun again in three seconds. It looks like he can't close anymore. So just a two for one. And Bambo there doing it for the team, going in head first and just catching out who he could there with the RP, allowing his DK fellow to get that double kill. I'm just saying, if that magic missile didn't go off, that would have been a hell of a lot worse. Because that would have been what, like a four man RP, I think he was in range for during the skewer. But the stun came off a little bit too fast from Always Wanna Fly and he couldn't get all the heroes that he wanted, so. He saved a potential catastrophe for Team Spirit. Still, the DK form is going to be utilized again in the tower. This is really important stuff. Like, I know I keep going back to it, but this is what the hero is based on. Like, you, you fight with your ulti, or you push with your ulti, and then when it's down, you just wait. Lion wait as a dragon. A very nice rotation, too, just realizing that Roshan would be on the menu. They didn't manage to stop it, but at the very least, they counter pressure, they get some kills. So they didn't get it for free. They could have easily chosen to kill the top tier 1, but I think not taking a team fight when you're that strong would have been a mistake. So in that sense, I think that Mama's Boys made the, the right call trying to fight it. Oh, 40 minutes in. Let's have a look at the net worth. Oh, I forgot to get that one up. You're but, uh, like 40 seconds early. Don't, isn't it like 15 minutes you put on Oh, network? I thought... Well, I used to do 10 minutes. Then the 10 minutes was is like, like really 12 early. 12 minutes. And now you're saying 15 minutes. So I've... Ah, we, okay, we can... so... I'm good then if it's 15 minutes. I think 15 minutes is the best. Because okay. that way the laning phase is almost always done. And then you can get a good idea of like tower advantage gold and things like that just based off seeing the CS and then you switch over to net worth and you just like... Seems good. That's what I like anyway. I suppose it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Anybody who knows anything about Dota will be able to gauge how much money people have just by looking at the state of the game. Well. Easy tier 2 here on the bottom lane for the side of Mama's boys. Oh, I didn't get the last hit though, Hook. Come on, step it up. Yeah, it's alright though. He did, um... You mentioned the blink, right? On the DK? I did not mention the blink. Okay, no, he's just well, picked that up, hasn't he? I think that, yeah, he's only just got that. Yeah. Before that tower push. So this is the super scary way of, like, uh, playing DK, because you can just blink behind the tower, because you know you're just, like, mega tanky. 
I mean, even right now, he's like, yeah, whatever. Cold snap, forward spirits. I have 17 armor and a 15 minute game. And 20 war, well, 21 HP regen. That's not, not yeah. too shabby. The thing that makes this lineup very hard to deal with is that the DK can go for a later BKB, like we mentioned that earlier, and they will be able to push every single outer tier tower. Okay, Bambo, you are like the manliest person for being there right now. He actually just threw out a spite shockwave to let them know that he was there, and then potentially makes them all chase him to buy a little bit more time, but I don't think Team Spirit are too interested in that, they just keep pushing in. But they're kind of getting pulled apart at the moment. They're having a very hard time finding any kind of points to pressure. The Chen has not gotten a tower in a 16 minute game. I don't know. Oh, it, okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just getting, uh, yeah, feeling this power of the sun strike that. Bless him. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, is this... It's, it's very even at the moment. It's, I mean, if you had to pick a side now, who would you pick it? Do you think it, it, Mammoth's boys are going to be the ones more comfortable? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think that the hero matchups favor them too much in this game. Like, we haven't talked much about PyCat, but he's working his way towards BKB. He's got Dominator already. His net worth is way up there. Like, the problem is the Invoker needs to carry a lot of weight this game. Like, Iceberg needs to do pretty much all the work inside of these team fights. And they're giving away so many towers. So the problem with doing that is supports are going to be really farmed, which means that heroes like Invoker do really well when heroes don't have BKB or the supports are low level and under farm, so you can just like blow them up. But he can't really do that if they have zero map control. Like he's not going to find his Yule's combo or anything. Like he's not even making it. He just went bots, uh, Midas drums. So I don't I don't know like how much he's going to be able to do to keep his team in the game. And the Sven is still a long way off from being able to fight. But they are getting an okay trade here for the first time, pushing in the safe lane. Yeah, Team Spirit are going, going for pretty much the same momentum as before and jump in straight away. Crush onto Bambo, he'll walk it off. He's got a blink. He's oh, oh no, no, Bambo! He RPs the creeps! <laughs> oh, we heard about stunning the boar. This is RPing the World Ring Ripper. All and, right, uh, well. all right, a bit of a mess here. Uh, Team Spirit wondering if they should get themselves out. Uh, oh, no, What, he brought the DK back? No! Oh my god. What right, is well, going on? I'm not quite sure what to watch here. It's... Get some Benny Hill shit going on right now. That's all you need to know. I don't, I don't actually... I think they're going to get more anyway, right? Oh. Blink up in two seconds. He has full wand too. Yeah, they're, they're going to get another kill. Yeah, but oh, Bambo kill redeemed himself there with the skewer back onto the Invoker. So they do find Iceberg. Why didn't he blink for the Venge? Alright, I'm lost. I don't know what's going on right now. Well, basically what happened was they were chasing the Sven, and Yapsor didn't break the tether onto Hook, so he brought him back into the jungle. So he had to TP across to the tier 1 to get back into the team fight. And I think his blink was off cooldown, like he could have killed the Venge too, but he wanted to just make sure that the Invoker died, I guess. Like going for the higher priority kill, rather than going for the greedy play. Which I suppose when you're ahead is fine. Like stability is never a bad thing, but he could have gotten more out of that, I believe. Either way, Mama's boys maintain control of the game. They get the Aegis off of Invoker. They kill him two times, actually. And they're going to take an Ancient stack here. I think that was a three stack. So all things considered, still in a very, very good position. I mean, this has got to be like one of the latest mech arcane timings I've ever seen on a Chen. I don't know. I'm kind of looking at this Chen, and I'm, I'm finding it pretty lacking. Oh, like Vengeful Spirit, what you doing, Sonny Jimmy? Boy, he's Skiro, uh, he's dead. Sonny Jimmy? Sonny Where's Jimmy. Where's that from? I don't know. He was just dead. Yeah, he is mega dead. <laughs> oh, dear. 10 for 4, I mean, Mama's boys having a good game. Get They're having a good game, too. Yeah, I... I'm trying to think of what... Team Spirit can actually do. Like, the starter has Blink. But if he blinks in at a bad time, there's a lot of stuns, there's heavy burst damage, and he's actually the only person who can lead into fights. So I feel like his role in this game became very difficult. If you don't have BKB, and you try to blink into, like, Gyrocopter, Witch Doctor, Magnus, DK stun, if you oh, miss your stun... Oh, Saxa! Okay, okay, he did. Maybe. No. Nope. He just got voodooed. 
He's just got that was some good voodoo shit. Ah, sacks. Oh, the AK jukes. Oh, they're not good enough. They're not good enough. That that was un that was like oh. the not even juke juke. What is happening here? Ramses just says, "All right, you want to relocate in? We'll have a He's fight." In. He wants to go for oh the RP Bambo. Swap out here from always want to fly. He gets himself caught under the cooldown though, so it'll almost certainly be the sacrificial lamb. Hand of God coming out. Oh, he's getting sent at home. Go black says go back. Ah uh, well, once you go black, you certainly go back. And he's gone. Okay, that's ham. That's super ham. Oh my. Well, that skewer might have saved him actually. Oh, never mind. He's dead. All right, that's some. That's some 322 right. play. What is in. going on in this game? All right, so when you expend your RP and. Uh, like this, the RP itself was actually fine, but they RP this man in the tower with no follow up. They threw a call down, assuming that the swap wouldn't be there, and he like always want to fly. Got the spent out, which means that that call down's wasted. The RP is wasted. The relocate, I don't even like. I don't even know what they relocated. Like that fight was just so sloppy. I think for Mama's voice, but that's the kind of stuff that can get a, a team back into the game real quick, especially since pretty much everyone lived through that. Like that's four staff now. For the Sardar, like he doesn't need a BKB if he can just reposition himself with the forest, so that's good for him. The 10 second BKB charge actually resulted in winning a team fight, which is a pretty big deal too. The lower the BKB gets, the harder it is for Sven to do his job, and he was forced into buying a very early BKB. Like normally you would not want to buy this until like third, fourth item. Yeah, he certainly had to change his build, yeah. Yeah, it's it's worked out so far, and they could get another kill. I think this is a will. goner. I mean, he's tanky, but he's, oh. he's not that tanky. Yeah, level 2 <laughs> Amplify. Minus 15 armor. Nice Dragon Knight forehead. Nah, but... I think he probably just goes BKB now, after the game has kind of devolved into this for him. Because he's got 3k. And I don't think he wants to go anything like Shadowblade in this position. It's just safer to go for BKB. Yeah, 22 minute mech here for Chan. Not the dream, necessarily. Nah, not at all. But, the Slardar and the Sven are doing a really good job at pulling them back into the game. Can't underestimate how much single target damage a Sven does with Amplify. Wow, smoke up from the man, Bambo. He's looking to try and find a position here for an RP, but... It's going to be Roshan that they're looking for next. They're sending the creep in and out. Roshan, it's got the longer respawn time, so they'll, they'll wait for the Rosh here. It's, uh, they're going to need Magnus to hit these big RPs to keep him on top of the game. Bambo's got to come out with the come up with the goods. Hook, how's he doing on his item build? BKB's nearly done. Yeah, he's just about 1,000 away from the recipe. That's going to be pretty huge. BKB's going to be very nice to have against Team Spirit's lineup, for sure. That's uh, Blink Dagger was the item to go back for after the BKB here on the Sven. Yeah, that's good synergy. If you're going to buy the BKB, the blink is just to get in the fight for free. And then when you already have somebody else on your team who has the blink dagger, the synergy becomes even better, because then you're looking at like instant damage coming out. So blink's done from the Sardar, God Strength pop, you blink in, follow him with a storm hammer, and you just punch whatever hero. It seems like the, the power scaling for Team Spirit has kind of reached a very strong peak right now that Mama's boys just weren't prepared to deal with, and the, the sloppy fight that they took mid is coming back to bite them pretty hard. Because it secures Roshan for Team Spirit. And they didn't actually go BKB on the gyro, they opted to go for S and Y. Which oh. means that he could get caught here and he, he will. is he is gone. Pie cat. Yeah. Yeah, no way you can live through this one. Team Spirit just absolutely annihilating the gyrocopter. And now they look to push and they'll probably be able to take this tier two down on this bottom lane here. Yeah, no doubt about that. And God Strength is not really that long of a cooldown either. It's only 80 seconds, so... By the time they push this tower down, if they want to try to breach high ground, they'll probably have it again. It's just a matter of if they feel confident going high ground against this team, with the Gyro being dead for another 20 seconds. So, all in all, they, they probably just end up backing. They see that DK is top. But they didn't see him TP. Uh. I mean, pushing this in right now... With the BKB duration being 9 seconds on the Sven, it's a pretty good opportunity. They have a giant creep wave as well. Oh, there we go. Push onto the tier 3. How are they going to stop it? What's the answer here from Mama's Boy? They'll put the fortification out. 
From the side hook, jumps in, okay. gets the dragon tail on ties, but they want to try and find the evoker here. We've got to watch the Magnus, you got to watch the Magnus, there's your RP onto two, screw in the back as well. Iceberg and Goldback have been caught out together, they get the mech, they get the swap off Iceberg. He's going to be able to live through this one, he's still alive, he turns, starts to get the combo out onto Hook, and he's going to do it. Iceberg, living through the initial initiation, and he's now going to back off, he's going to survive. There's only two, three dead on the side of, I love Mark's good madness. <laughs> no, I love, oh my god, stupid name. I love Mama's voice, <laughs> and they will buy back on the IO. Bambo's been amplified, the crush is there onto two, as Yapsil did try and look for the save, it's a die back on your IO. Double kill for Go Black, and I think I that think could actually game, be them doing it. Yeah, that was pretty huge here for the boys on Team Spirit. So they jump on the hero that has Aegis, which, I mean, he was the one that was the furthest out of position, but at the same yeah. time, you can't really jump him like that. I guess if they're still pushing... tier 2s and tier 1s in the other lanes, though. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's it's a game-deciding fight mm. because of how much they're going to get out of it. And Pycat, oh my god, is he actually just dead again? Yeah, he is. Okay. So things got real out of hand real fast. That team fight mid, they get Roshan, they take a, another team fight bottom where they go on a hero that has Aegis and <sighs> nothing really worked oh, out boy. the way that it was supposed to, I think, in that engagement. Like, why would they jump that? I'm actually really curious. Maybe they <laughs> thought that they were TPing away? Because I think the rest of the heroes on Team Spirit were high ground and maybe he assumed that they were just backing because they got a little bit of damage and thought that he could go for a pick. That's probably the most likely scenario, is he thought that they were just getting back. Because otherwise, that jump was, like, not great. Oh, I don't know what's going on at the moment in this game. It's It really does feel like it's just mistakes are being made by Mama's boys, yeah. And look, right. uh, it really does feel like mistakes are being made by Mama's boys. I'll accentuate That's a my nine point second there. BKB, and they had a ward, so they saw it pop yeah. as well. <laughs> as if he did um, that when I said that. They're literally just pinging the lane now, being yep. like, alright, we're going to push. No BKB. Let's go. Oh boy. Oh yeah, back to base. Relocate him out. Save the man. Vlad's done on the Venge. BKB done on the Slard. I'm alright in pickups coming out for the side of Team Spirit. I'll help with this push. And I'm looking to try and take this tier 2 from the top lane. Get rid of the uh, the remaining tier 2s here on the board. Hmm. It really felt like... Okay, blink forward. Oh, nice swap, swap out. out. Yeah, Iceberg's fine. They're fighting very split up right now, too. They're gonna solo RP? They should be able to kill him here. Yeah, okay. Can Hook get more? He might be able to find the Venge. Nah, he's not gonna go for it. It's a little bit too too crazy for the map. Go back now with the Arcane Rune. And uh, he's actually got the acronyms done here on this chat. Holy crap. So, I he mean, this was from like <laughs> 22 was minute four minutes. It was a 22 minute mech, pretty much. <laughs> was it 22 or 23? I so think he farmed the nice in 5 okay. minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they went from being in like a really awkward position where it didn't really feel like they could fight that well to everyone is rich. Two team fights back to back plus Roshan. Just insane snowball coming out. I think the Slardar is actually the hero for me that has uh, had the biggest impact. Not necessarily because he had like amazing stuns or anything, but yeah. just because the amplified damage allows them to actually cut through the DK, which they would have definitely had a problem with. And maybe. If he had kept at the rate that he was, and he got BKB, I think they still would have had a hard time dealing with the DK. Because late game, when you hit 16, you can just like kite heroes like Sven, for example, like with your Elder Dragon form when you hit uh, the Frost Dragon. But unfortunately, the fights went really, really badly, and they're even going to potentially lose Bambo here. This guy has BKB, man. Jesus. Like, this Lardar is massive. Yeah, this is looking, yeah, a lot harder and harder here for the guys. Oh boy, Mama's boys. They've got to do something bigger. And they're going to need to do it soon. The push coming down the mid lane. Team Spirit, no reason really to hold off on this one. AC now picked up here by the Sven. Bottom lane, it looks like Slada's just toying with Pycat, blinking in, blinking out. And here's your push. Fortification coming out from the side of Mama's boys. They've got a cooldown as well. Trying to hold back Ramses, Saxa will throw out, throw out the cask. But that's your tower gone, and uh, they'll look for more. Hand of God's popped. They'll get the stun out. Uh, the Death Ward as well, but they get the swap off straight away. Crush onto Saxa. He's been caught out on the sidelines. They've had the mech pop. Saxa's going to be able to live through that one. But Ramses blinking forward here with the BKP. Cuts through the Witch Doctor. The Doctor is out for good. RP! Oh, oh the RP! Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my they god! They after all of them! That's two down! Make that three! Only the uh, Moka able to get himself away. Oh. That was the RP that they needed, but they did Damn. lose the racks, but it was a bloody good RP. It was. That was the, the Dendi RP. We'll call it that from the series earlier, right? Okay, wow. they're gonna get the star too. Oh, he has BKB, never mind. I think he just runs away. Yep. Uh, they could probably chase this. Uh, the oh, relocate. they're relocating. Oh, the blink. Oh no, oh no. It's oh, gonna no. wear off! No, you fool! Oh my god. Okay, he could have just kept running. <laughs> oh. Okay, they're back in. They're back in, Andy, I think. Even though they did lose a, well, lose a second set of racks, so that wasn't their great. Their base is kind of in shambles, and Roshan's yeah. not up. So the amount of objectives they can take for their teamfight win are fairly limited, and they also have buyback on every single hero on Team Spirit, in case they wanted to actually try to pressure a tower. So while the fight was very good, I think um, they still got a little bit more work to do. A little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean... They gotta win like two team fights very handedly. Finish the AC on the Dragon Knight, which that team fight actually almost did, I believe, because he already has the Hyperstone and he's got the plate mail, so he only needs the recipe and the chain mail. But yeah, I I actually underestimated the uh, Sven Slardar as a frontline hero playing against that combination in particular has got to be a nightmare. Because the Sven already hits hard enough on his own, and then you just lose 20 armor playing against a level 16 Slardar. Feels like oh, Goblack man. had the answers all along, man. He did, he's, he's been a smart drafter, the man. Yes, that's for sure. There's no denying that. But, oh, I mean, yeah, they need this AC. How far is he away from AC? He's, he needs the plate master, doesn't he? He so. has it, I think. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's got it in the career. Nice. Yeah, the plate mail is in the career. Okay. You're right. Yeah, okay, that, that's going to be pretty huge for this next fight as well. We, I mean, we saw how much damage Ramsey's... that combo did without the AC. I mean, with an AC, yeah. you hit a good RP and you have the Empower on the jar and they just die. The thing die, that's kind of hard for them, though, is that there already is an AC and a Vlad's up on Team Spirit. Yeah, so it's just kind of countering it out. Yeah, like you negate the minus armor that you take, but is it going to be tanky enough? Like, he has 41 armor, and it's weird to say that it doesn't even sound like enough in this game, but... You have minus 25 from the Amplify and the um, the AC, and then you also have to worry about Wave of Terror, which is another minus 6. So you actually lose 31 armor if you get waved and you're in the teamfight. Oh, let's see what the plan is now here. Are they going to try and come out the base mountains, boys? They've had to leave the Witch Doctor behind, though, to clear out the bottom lane, but... <sighs> Maybe seeing if they fall for this Bambo is Shadow Blading him. He's going to Shadow Blade in on this one. Do we have a gem on any of the boys on the side of uh, Team Spirit? Uh, we do not. They do have sentries. Have they popped a sentry down the moment? No. They will, though. If they're yeah. going to go into the Roche pit, there's no way they don't sentry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll cover the area around the pit for sure. Uh, this should die really fast. I don't even think that Mama's boys are in a good position to defend this. I think they're going to try, though. Okay, I think DK they're going to try. Go in. Okay. DK and there's Bambo. Oh, for the swap. Oh no 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 no! They'll still get the. He's the doing RP no damage. Two. They'll get the RP onto two. Then the Hook is just kind of sitting there dying though. Pi Cat now turning up, trying to do what he can here with the flat cannon hits. He's only got two more of them. They are falling fairly low. They have managed to take down the two squishier members, and they might just be able to do this. Ramses now trying to turn onto Pi Cat, but he's being kited. The BKB is worn off. He's looking for Saxa, blinking from Afterlife on the Slada, getting the crush onto two. Ramses still playing with Saxa, will be able to finally finish him here. Iceberg back in the fight now. Deafening Glass gets himself a double kill, turns towards Pi Cat, and he'll be able to find that as well. That's the gyro down, four down. So they do manage to take it and come out and stop their team spirit. Yeah, it wasn't actually a totally lopsided fight though. Like I thought it would go a lot worse since Hook popped his BKB like super super early. He just saw heroes and decided that he didn't want to get stunned. So he just throws out a stun onto the spin, realizes that oh dear god I actually do zero damage. And then tried to run away but unfortunately it didn't work out. And having the granite golem as well. Like they're just a tank. Okay Bambo, come Bambo. on. Bambo! What was he doing there? Uh, he was hoping there wasn't a sentry, that's what he was doing there. I mean, he wants to go for a play, right? Like, when you're this far behind and you want to try to go for, like, a Roshan steal, you might, like, one game out of, like, 20 be able to catch them off guard if, by not having a sentry and then steal the Aegis and get you back into the game. Like, I understand why he went there, but at the same time, there's going to be a sentry there. Like, like, like 95% of the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> he, well, Bambo's the kind of guy who looks at that 5% and says, that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't disagree with that logic, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's the funny when part, because position, if you know... You do it. Yeah, if you know that you're going to lose anyway, yeah. you definitely go for the play that gives you the biggest opportunity to win. They call it playmaking for a reason, Owen. Come on. <laughs> and Bambo is pretty much the definition of that. That's, that's for sure. True. Well, that's, that's, obviously, that's what he does. I mean, just as much as that's a Bambo play, that's also an Owen play. <laughs> like, you would make that play. Not for the same reason, You see, you I, the that difference play. being, I make that play when there's a 100% chance that it was going to go wrong. <laughs> that's... It's <laughs> alright, man. There's always that one time that it works, and you just feel so good. Alright, so it's Farmville now for uh, Team Spirit, I guess. Just waiting it out. They got the cheese. They got Steve's on. Uh, Steve's on the slaughter. That's a bit of an interesting one, is it? Uh, it's really good, actually. When you want to just chase, and uh, the Shiva Zora also is really nice. A lot of people don't think about it, but 45 uh, attack aura slow is like taking away a hyperstone from a hero. Yeah, it's pretty big against the DK with an AC. Yeah, slowing yeah, it down. Yeah, and Gyro as well. And here we go, Bambo, smoked up. Let's do it, let's do it, let's get a big RP. And I kind of like what they've been doing, they've, they've kind of always been kind of blinking in the DK on the front lines, trying to get people to jump in on him, and then Bambo's there with the with the cover-up RP. Which we'll see here, so Hook blinks in, tries to get them to draw to draw near him, but there'll be a swap, he's hoping that they come close here for an RP, therefore getting laid down here. Is it going to be the cooldown? Oh, that's good RP. Onto two, keeping them under the cooldown, bring them closer to the death ward. They'll take down two. Okay. Iceberg, he's put the BKB, he will find the kill onto Magnus. And looks like he will get himself out. Oh, oh, Pycat didn't get it. No, he did it again. He relocated him back on accident, I think. Although I'm not sure with the creep ice armor if he would have been able to chase. He is going to TP though. Their base is under siege from a, a wild invoker. Oh, hook. He might have been caught out here, and he certainly has. That's to the DK down. He does have buyback though. Oh, he has Ghost Scepter. He's the cheeky little ball, but the cheeky ball will get molested. And that's a double kill here for the Invoker. Now he's looking for more. Can he get a triple Iceberg? Look at this man, he's a bit of a player. Ghost Walk, man, what a spell. Yeah, I think you've got to ban out Iceberg's Invoker for sure. I think we've seen what two, if he, he's played it two times, hasn't he? And he's had great games on both of them. Yeah, he is a very, very good Invoker player. Um, it's hard to justify banning Invoker, though. Like, a lot of these teams are prioritizing OD now. A lot of people seem to think that he's very, very strong. And I think this game, it was like, Tiny was banned in the first two from Team Spirit. And then, what the heck did Mama's Boys even ban? I can't even remember. I've been up for way too long already. <laughs> but, the, um... The fact is, Invoker is a very strong hero, but there are ways yeah. to deal with him, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Like, you, you don't want to just first ban Invoker oh, every no. single game, because it's a hero that pretty much every single team can run, so it's not really giving you an advantage, I feel, by taking it away. You kind of want to tailor your bans towards teams nowadays, I think. At one point, it was okay just to ban the hero that you felt was super strong, but if any team can play it, then that means that if it's played enough, you learn how to deal with it. So, it's kind of the same thing that happened when... Uh, like, way back when Naga Siren was picked all the time, like around TI3 era and Morphling and stuff like that, people learned how to play against the heroes. So I think Invoker is going to pretty much become that. And plus, they did nerf him. They did in that little, uh, what, 6.86C? Yeah, yeah, they, they turned him down a little bit. They nerfed it by 66% at level 1. Yeah, it they made it like 30 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 or something, didn't it? Was no, it's, it's 10. It's 10. 10 25, one. 40. Okay. So at max level, it's still pretty much the same, like a tiny bit weaker, but at lower levels, it's way worse. No, I think, uh, didn't it change to so at max level, it's better than it was? I swear, like, uh, it, the max was like 100 before, now it's 115. But I think they made the final level better. Maybe they did. But maybe everything did. else scaled up at a lower rate, I y think. You might have been right, it might have been 100 I might be thinking about something else, I don't know. But yeah. But yeah, yeah, you're right, in the laning stage, it's been toned down, yeah. For sure. Does okay, it, oh. here we go. Okay, you are dead. Bash. That was, I mean, two PKBs down. They do have buybacks, so. Oh. Oh, 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 oh! What? He hit him. He what? actually. What? He did. I saw it. Yeah, the stun debuff was on him. He yeah, was stunned. He got hit. He was stunned. All right, Dan's game. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the patch, Ice Frog. Thanks, Ice Frog. Yeah.
That's okay though. I think they'll be fine with it. Well, I, I think that that's the thing. I think with the TP animation, like the channeling thing, it finishes, and when it finishes, that means you've TP'd, but your hero actually is there for like a tiny fraction, so you can still get debuffs RP? on you. And, oh, the swap, the swappy woo. He gets the sweat out. That's actually. I really mean, Venge nice. is dead. That's for sure. The question is, if is anyone else dead? And I don't think they are. So that swap works out, and that was also a buyback there from the DK to look for that fight. He gets ensnared. They might get go back as well, and they do. So they get the dragon tail off. No, well, with the crush, they might be able to turn it. And now with Invoker coming back in as well, Iceberg throwing down the meatballs. Definitely, Glass coming out as well. Pycat does get the BKB off. And the cooldown as well. Trying to move himself in. The stun onto Hook from Ramses. He'll move in with the right clicks. He's done a fair bit of damage. Iceberg trying to focus down Yaps on the IO. Hook's turning and fighting. Pycat as well. He's actually just doing it. Pycat, he's got enough damage. They might just do it, Mammoth Boys. They might just take this fight. The skewer onto two. They found four. The dust coming out. They're going to find five as well. It's going to be a team wipe. Team Spirit are all dead, and I love Mamas boys have done it. They have done it for the time being. Great fight from them. Jesus, man. That. Okay, so they get re engaged on. Originally, that swap was supposed to avoid like a catastrophe, but they just get chased out too far. The gyrocopter has reached a point in the game where he's starting to do a ridiculous amount of damage. He is doing a lot with his same power. That's I mean, look like... at his farm. He's yeah. got Butterfly, he's got 3,000 gold on top of that with the BKB. Yeah. He's gonna have Satanic soon. And, and he's he's even got a Keeler. Well done, Owen. <laughs> well done. Way to break my train of thought, you <laughs> fucking... Alright, whatever. Um, the late game of Keeler, boys. That's where, it's... That's about how games are won. We're, we're getting to that point where the spend is starting to kind of teeter off a bit, you know? Like earlier, he seemed yes, crazy yeah. strong. But the item progression on the other heroes on the side of uh, Mama's boys and the scaling with Empower is becoming a little bit too much for them to handle. And we even said it early, like going late game against this team is very, very scary for just that reason. Like even if you can kill the DK, his damage scaling is going to be there. The RP from the team fight is always scary. They're oh, going to dive deep uh, here. Okay. Is it actually worth dying for the Chen? Well, I don't know, because the Vengeance doesn't have no, buyback. No, it is. It, de it definitely is worth it, because the Vengeance or a debuff on the team, that makes it worth it. Crush comes out, but the BKB from Hook coming out just in time here. He's been amplified. Gets the Dragon Tail stun onto Ramses, just forcing him away. They managed to take down the range Rex. They're going to look for the melee Rex here as well. Cooldown being popped down by Pycat. Just making sure to cancel some blinks. He's going to hit onto the Slada, so Slada can't really initiate. They're going to try and jump in with the God Strength. With the Storm Ammo onto Hook. Hook in trouble. Good but reload. Yapsaw going over. Oh, the relocation to the side. Yapsaw God saving them. And now Bambo. He's looking for an RP. The Dampening Blast does come out. Trying to get himself in position. Can he get it? No, he can't. Yes, he can. Just in time, he gets the stun off and Bambo gets himself off to the side with the Shadow Blade. He's going to Hook gets relocated back in. Yep, so bringing him closer to the invoker. Oh, 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 they get four. Oh my god. They have three buybacks. They have three buybacks. They Mama's can defend this. Boys. Still. Yep, they're so. going to force them all, though. Oh, He's they're getting redded. They're oh. getting redded in the base. Oh no. They oh, There's no BKB. Oh no. Oh. The throne. You got to oh. save it. They actually can't defend this. Oh, they actually dear. can't defend this. It's too much damage. I think Bulldogs just jizzed all over the computer screen in chat. Oh, oh my. What the. Oh, okay. That was that kind of shit gets you a direct invite to the Shanghai Major. That's you know, I'm sure S4 and Bulldog are evident of that. Well, That's I how think you what you meant Dota. to say was <laughs> this kind of shit actually gets you through the qualifier. But it does in this case. Yeah, that was a very nice play. A very very nice play.